Our next panelist, Dr. Tamir Mahana, was born in Virginia to Egyptian parents. Dr. Tamir Mahana is the brother of Muslim prisoner Dr. Tariq Mahana. Am I saying the name? Yeah. Oh, thank you, sir. Tamir currently resides in Boston, Massachusetts, where he works in the pharmaceutical and biotech management consulting industry. When his brother was arrested in 2009, Dr. Mahina rallied the support of thousands of people with the help of groups and of associates that today constitute the Tariq Mahana Support Committee. The committee is the core steering group for the Free Tariq Campaign, a broad-based grassroots movement to bring greater attention not only to the true facts and realities of the case being fabricated against his brother Tariq, but also to the cases of other Muslims who face familiar circumstance, similar circumstances in the United States without their own support mechanism. My brother was, you know, he's been, for, since 2004, he's been going through a pretty extended ordeal uh, thanks to uh, the intrusion of the FBI into our lives. And today he's been in solitary confinement since October of 2009. So that means that uh, a chunk of 2009, all of 2010, and a big chunk of 2011 were erased from his life. He will not get those years back. And his trial doesn't begin until October. It's coming October. Um, just to, to cut to the heart of why my brother is where he is, I want to talk about community for a second. You know, because, I mean, this being a, a community center, I think it's important to understand, like, why we're here, why we're all coming here to sit down. Yeah. And if you think about the origins of the concept of, of community, like, before there were communities, it was what? It was like, there was nature, there was people all separated from each other. You know, you're all living on your own in the wild. You know, and the first communities formed because we realized that together, we can accomplish more and we can be safer. We can live civilized lives when we work together and we come together. You know, we work together, that means that we look out for each other. That means that we work towards a common purpose. And, you know, in order for that to work, in order for this idea, this wonderful idea of the community to work, we all kind of, each individual unit of the community needs to have the best interests of all the other members at heart. So we have a problem with that today because, I mean, I could speak for the Muslim American community, but I'm sure that, you know, a lot of our fellow African Americans here, which technically I'm African American because I'm from Egypt, you know, so we, we just barely make it in there, you know. I feel it, I feel it. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I can speak for like the Muslim American community, and let me tell you, like, despite all of what you hear on the news about homegrown terror and all that stuff, it's a load of baloney. Because trust me, nobody is more afraid than the Muslim American communities. I'm not afraid. The Muslim American communities are very afraid though. And you see, there's a problem when you have that fear. Because who here has heard of divide and conquer? You see, that's the bane of a community. That's the problem when we have a community, you know, is that it's all about power. There's people in a, in a community that want power. And when you have people that have the bonds of a community between them, that really limits their ability to have power. Because the whole point of a community is to limit the power of those that try to take advantage of others. You know, and they, they don't like that none too much. So they try to divide us. And that's what happens in the Islamic community. And, and the favorite way of doing that is using informants, snitches. Our communities are infested with them. It's a disease, you see, like our communities, you know, in order for it to function properly, you need each individual member, again, like we said, to be looking out for each other. But you see, what happens is when you have certain le weak links in that community, you have people who are willing to compromise the good of the community for their own selfish benefit. 
And it's funny because it's a really self-defeating thing here. You know, because like the FBI will come to you and they'll be like, look, you know, just, you know, agree with us when we come public with this fake case. And, you know, we'll give you money, we'll give you support, we'll relocate you, we'll do whatever you need to keep you safe. And it's like, and, and you'll do that, but I mean, in the end, they'll sell you out too. In the end, they'll sell you out too. They'll only help you while they need you. You know, the only people you can really count on is your community. So, I mean, I'm looking in the, in the crowd here, you know, and I'm really happy to see all these faces here. Just like I'm really happy to see all the faces when I go to my mosque, you know. But in my mosque, not all those faces are there out of sincerity, you know. Not all the faces are there out of sincerity. So, part of that fear is what's used to make more people join the ranks of these informants. It's like, well, you know, if you don't sell them out first, they'll sell you out. You know, as those who are like looking to do what's good in society, unfortunately we can't afford to give in to that type of low grade incentive to betray our own people. You know, we really have to like constantly strive in order to like look out for our own and to strengthen our communities because without our communities, we're all alone in the dark. Now, what does this have to do with my brother? Uh, since 2004, I mean, my brother, like me, he graduated uh, with a doctorate in pharmacy. You can make a pretty good living as a pharmacist these days, I've heard. But uh, my brother couldn't tell you because he decided not to be a pharmacist. He decided to help his community out by being a teacher at the local Islamic center. Took a little pay cut. He doesn't actually take a paycheck home for that. But he, he believes in what it means to have a strong community. And he knew that he could contribute. And that's what he did. And he gained a lot of people's trust and respect by doing it. You'd be amazed how much respect you can gain from people around you when you try to give without taking. When you're just there to give and add to your community. And he earned a lot of respect. A lot of respect. He was a well-read guy too, so he knew what he was talking about. You know, he taught math and history and stuff, but he also gave a lot of sermons. A lot of sermons. Uh, this is in Worcester, Worcester, Massachusetts. And the FBI, they recognized that he had like a lot of clout with, you know, the community. He recognized a lot of people were feeling what he was saying and that he had, you know, he had a lot of respect, genuine respect. So they came to him and they were like, you know, look, we kind of, here's the deal that we offer. And my brother was like, no, I'm not really, I'm not interested. And between 2004 and 2008, they came to him probably five, six times. And each time they try to amp up the pressure, you see? Because like, they really don't like it when people say no to them. They really don't like it. It's, but they're kind of childish about it, you see? Because they get bitter. They get very bitter about it. And so then they start going to work and complaining to your boss. They start, you know, finding all sorts of ways to create pressure on you to do what they say. And they just got more and more bitter because my brother kept on saying, no, I'm not going to help you guys. There was one time actually where I was sitting with my brother in his lawyer's office. This was about 2007 by now. And his lawyer was on the phone with the FBI. And he was like, well, what do you guys want? And the FBI was like, your client knows what we want. We want him to collaborate with us. And your client knows what's going to happen if he doesn't collaborate with us. We're going to make his life miserable. And my brother, at that moment, what he said was, tell them that even if I have to spend every single day of the rest of my life in prison, I will never, ever collaborate with them. Those were his exact words. So, I mean, I suppose the reason that I'm standing here today is the is to ask us like, how many of us can look ourselves in the mirror and just say the same thing? How many of us would do the same thing? Because it's funny, two of the snitches in this case used to be two of his best friends. But, I mean, people always have the machinations. Um, 
I'm not here to push my belief on anybody. I'm a Muslim. And in Islam, we believe that God stands above all else. And that's what I believe. And so, you know, I mean, people can do what they will, but as long as we do what we are supposed to do, then God will carry us forth. And my brother's case begins, his trial begins on October 3rd. So everybody turn on Fox News or whatever it is that we watch for, for news these days. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I hope not, but you never know these days. <laughs> but uh, October 3rd, his, his case starts. Um, it's a pretty interesting case, you see, because he hasn't done anything. So I'm not entirely, like... I'm not entirely sure what the prosecution's going to charge or what, what kind of case they're going to try to build. He's being charged with providing material support to a terrorist organization. But here's the funny way that they build the charges here. Um, his charges are conspiracy. Conspiracy to provide material support to terrorists. Conspiracy to provide material support to a terrorist organization. And providing material support to a terrorist organization. You see, so it's funny, they, take, they just take the words, they play around with them. And then they end up with like life, life in prison. So, um, we're basically just waiting to see how things will begin to play out. So I ask everybody, you know, keep an eye on the news, you know, leading up to October 3rd. We're going to be pretty vocal about it. In case you couldn't tell, my family, you know, we're not exactly people to take things and lie down. You know, it's going to be in Boston, the John Moakley Federal Courthouse in Boston. It's a tall order to ask anybody to attend there, but, uh, you know, it's enough, you know, just uh, if you guys keep an eye on the news and watch it. Uh, and I think that we have a pretty good shot at this because, you know, he has a very strong legal team. It's funny, you know, the legal, the legal system here is not about whether you're guilty or innocent, it turns out. It's all about how deep your pockets are and what kind of attorney you can provide. So, my brother, he was technically unemployed when he was arrested, so, you know, it, he has a court-appointed attorney. Um, again, I say this is from God, you may, other people may say it's from something else. He happened to win the jackpot of court appointed attorneys and he has a really, really excellent attorney. So we're hoping that we're hoping that brings, you know, a positive a positive turn to this case. But uh, I can I can say one thing as I'm standing up here. I'd rather my brother be locked up for sticking to his ethics and his beliefs than to have a single day free out here having compromised those beliefs. You know, and I hope that anybody here can walk away having gained that same, that same value from learning about my brother's case. And I encourage you all to visit freetaudit.com. That's free and then T-A-R-E-K.com. And uh, you could learn a bit more about my brother's case and maybe you guys can help us participate in our national campaign to raise awareness about the facts of the case. Uh, because unfortunately there's it's very muddled because you see the day that he was arrested there was a, there was a story that went out that he wanted to acquire firearms to shoot random people at a shopping mall you know it's all part of this war on terror this homegrown terror thing but if you it's, it's kind of funny if you visit the affidavit or any of the legal literature you won't find a single mention of that stuff it's this funny trick that we call character assassination you know, when the person's arrested, we have this media frenzy, this media circus. We spread these allegations. We won't call them charges because we don't want to be sued for libel or tort. You know, we call them allegations. We say that the person was going to commit all these acts. There's no basis for it. But hey, now, how many people are curious? You guys are curious. You guys are here because you're curious. But, you know, I... You know, um, our goal with this campaign is to get other people curious to look at the facts because even a little bit of curiosity goes a long way. So, I thank you all for your curiosity. I thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak in front of you. And I hope I get the opportunity again soon.